Hey what's up everyone, welcome to FX Maniac, this is Sayyid Mahmoud Amiri again and welcome to another really cool tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at the Maya Mash feature which is really cool and it has some really amazing capabilities so it is going to be a, a, a series of tutorials on this subject so this is going to be the first part and I'm going to be talking about some basics and how to set it up and hopefully in the future tutorials we will be talking a lot about creating some cool stuff with it. So let's get started with the tutorial but before we do if you're new here welcome to uh, FX Maniac this is my channel and uh, if you haven't subscribed um, make sure to subscribe you ain't gonna regret it. Alright so here we are inside of Maya I'm using Maya 2022 right now so the the thing that I'm going to get off first is that it's not going to be a we're not going to be creating some fancy stuff with it it's just going to be a very beginner tutorial because this is the first part and probably in the next tutorials I'm going to show you guys how to create some really cool stuff so uh, in this one we're going to talk about how to set it up and you know the different nodes and stuff so let's get started uh, enough uh, talking so first off uh, when you want to set up mash you can go ahead into the uh, modeling Sub menu, click on effects and it'll be like a menu here called mash and you can also access it through the shelves and if you don't see it here probably it is because you have not enabled it so you can go into window settings and preferences uh, plugin manager and you can go ahead and search for mash and make sure it is loaded and auto loaded and refresh and then close so then it'll be there so uh, mash is basically an instancer it just uses uh, it just replicates your object in some very cool different ways and you can add some cool different nodes to it to uh, sort of chain the behavior of those objects once it is replicated so uh, first off you need an object so um, I can go ahead and pick like a sphere or uh, a cube is much more um, sensible for beginners so I'll just uh, add a cube here it doesn't mean that you can you cannot use any other objects I just prefer to use the cube so uh, you can go ahead there first off um, it is here so if you want to go and set it up with mash you can go into the mash menu create mash network click on the box for these settings so we have two different options here first uh, first is the mesh uh, the geometry type is mesh and then there's instancer so if you have um, a small scene and you, you want to go for detail and you want to have access to a lot more nodes and controls you can use the mesh option uh, but if you're, use, if you're doing something like a forest and uh, it is going to be heavy on your, uh, on your, on your computer so you can, you can go ahead and use the instancer which, will, which is a little bit more memory efficient but then uh, you know, you'll have access to less features of mesh so yeah so in this case I'm just going to be sticking with the mesh option and then you can go ahead and give it a name a distribution type we're going to be taking a look in just a moment so apply and close so now you have your uh, original cube which is here which is hidden you have the mesh one repro mesh and then the mesh uh, default node uh, which is the waiter node so if you go into the attribute editor you have the uh, mesh waiter node along with all the other nodes that you can use and then you have the distribute node which is added by default so we have 10 cubes which is distributed linearly across the x-axis so you can go ahead and make it on the y-axis or even the z-axis and then you can change the number of points uh, as many as you want so right off the bat uh, this uh, just you can go ahead and increase the scale on different axes you know and make it look like like some bars so you can go hit center distribution or just like this or you can decrease this and in increase the scale on Z which will make it look like some steps so you can go ahead and increase the number or decrease it so this is basically how it works and uh, you can increase it and then you have the different types of distribution so you can go change it to radial and you can go here hit F to center it to the frame increase the radius the number of points of course and then the angle which you can keyframe so and all of these things are animatable so I, if I set this to zero we have it here and I, I can go ahead and set key 
go to 70 frames, increase it to 360, right click set key, so then you have this animation. All right, so everything is animatable and keyframable, so you can go ahead and do that. And then you have the Z offset, which is gonna offset it, you know, make it like a swirl sort of an effect. And then the, the very cool thing here is if you go into the strength uh, pull down, you have the strength of the uh, d distribute type. So it's just like how strong it is. And then you have a very cool option called the random strength. So it'll basically, you know, randomly sort of bring this on. So imagine you can animate this. So if I set this to zero, right click set key, go to 72 frames, set it to one, set key again. So now you have a very cool looking animation of this uh, these cubes sort of uh, coming and forming sort of randomly, which is looking really cool. So this is what this parameter does. So we'll definitely be using that quite a lot. So I'm just gonna right click and break the connection. Let's take a look at some of the other types. So you can go into the uh, spherical type. So if you click on it, you have like, you need to increase the number to a lot. So it goes till like a hundred, but then you can type like any number that you want and then you'll have um, that number of uh, cubes being replicated. So then you have the different uh, angles and then you have the radius of the sphere and then you have the animation speed and stuff if you want to animate it. And of course you, you can also use the random strength here as well. All right. So um, the other type is mesh. So this is basically used to sort of distribute that object along another object like like another mesh so you can go in, um, it can even be like a text so you can go into create 3d text click on it and then type like fex maniac and uh, just move it like here scale it down go ahead into modify center pivot and just scale it down here and I want the particles to be replicated along the shape of this object so you can go ahead, select the mesh one, and you have an input mesh. So you can go ahead, take the type mesh, and middle click and drag it to the input mesh area, and then you'll have the objects uh, sort of replicated onto that shape. So the objects are just a little big, so I can uh, select the original cube and just scale it down. Hold that, uh, hit R and scale it down, and um, yeah, so you have some different options here. So you have uh, the method is scatter, which is, I would say, the most used method. So you can go ahead and make it like 500. But then you have some other methods as well. So you can you can push the along the normal, so it'll make it a lot more like uh, push it along the normals of the object. Or you can you can set it to be on the vertices of the object, random vertices, face. Uh, and some other options, edges and voxels. You also have voxels, so yeah. But then the most used one, I would say probably is the scatter, so you can scatter along uh, the surface of an object. So imagine you can have like a mountain or something and then you can scatter like trees across the surface, which would look really cool. So yeah. Uh, the possibilities are endless and I'm going to show you guys in, a, in the future tutorials uh, how to create some cool stuff so right now we're just explaining and going through the basics so the other option you have is grid so you can go ahead and you know uh, if I hide this uh, text here you can have the grid you know and you can have the number of particles to be increased on that grid so you can increase that just like this on the X, on the Y, and on the Z. So basically, just like that. All right, so um, let's take a look at some uh, other features, um, some other nodes. So you have the repro node. So right now, you only have one object, right? So you can have multiple objects. Um, so if I create like a sphere, and I move it up, just like this, and I will go into distribute node, um, set it to probably like a sphere, yeah, like that. 
and turn down the radius so it's not so big and I'm going to uh, the repro node and take the sphere and middle click and drag it here as well so it is here but it's not shown up in the mesh uh, itself because we need to add a node in order to see it so that node is the ID node so they have some really cool visual icons here so you can see that you have three different objects so that means that the ID node is basically for adding multiple objects so now uh, when it is added so it's here and you can go and set the ID count to 2 because we have two objects and now if I select the original sphere you can just go ahead and scale it down because it's a little too large just like this move it aside and hide it so now you have that object and then you can have another object as well like a I don't know a platonic surface and again select the mesh go into the repro node and middle click and drag the object there and go into the ID node and set it to three so now you have three different objects and if I select the original object I can just go ahead and scale it down just like that alright so now uh, let's talk some other uh, I'm just gonna turn off the cache talk some other uh, nodes so I'm just gonna go into the main mesh you can na name it to like whatever right I'm gonna add a um, random node so what it does is very self-explanatory so it randomizes the position on different axes the rotation which is a very good thing so you need random rotation and the scale which uh, I wouldn't say is good but sometimes you can go ahead and play around with it or you can turn on uniform scale so one will be for all alright and of course you have the random sort of strength here as well which we've taken a look at so yeah this is basically it you know you can go ahead uh, you'll have a lot of other uh, nodes which we will be taking a look at on the future tutorials uh, there are a lot of them so I, we will be taking a look at most of them in uh, the future tutorials um, but for now uh, one more thing that I want to talk about is the uh, transform node so uh, let's just say if you wanted to move this up so you can't really do it right so you can even select this so the only way to do that is to add a transform node so you add a transform node and then you go and take the position maybe to like position Y to like 10 so you can move it up or any direction or scale it to like 0.2 and you know basically if you if you want to transform the effect the uh, whole sort of mash thing you can go ahead and do that and again the random strength is just working very beautifully here as well alright so uh, the one last thing that I want to talk about before we finish the tutorial is that uh, how to add some color to these uh, particles or objects so you can go ahead and add the color node and uh, here it is so you can change the color to maybe like a bluish color maybe like a little darker blue and then you have something called the random hue so you can go ahead and do that which is looking pretty nice and then the saturation randomness and the value randomness so definitely is looking really cool and uh, we will be playing around with some more um, you know nodes in the future but you can add like quickly another signal node and that is basically animate will animate the whole mesh thing just like this so it'll kind of use like a 4D noise so make sure when you're uh, playing this back you go ahead and set it to play every frame the type is set to 40 noise and it is gonna use like a noise field to basically animate these particles so you can increase the amount or decrease it but it is definitely looking really cool and you can go ahead and again keyframe every single parameter that you want here alright so you can go into the random one and stuff and we will be taking a look at a lot of other cool features of MASH in future tutorials, so definitely 
stay tuned for that. Alright, so this was the today's tutorial, the first part of the Maya Mash Basics. Stay tuned for the other parts which will be take, will be coming out soon and we'll be taking a look at some really cool stuff uh, uh, using Mash in Maya. So uh, stay tuned for that and uh, um, till then, make sure if you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure to do it. It would mean a lot to me so I can just continue making these free awesome tutorials for you people. And let me know what you guys think about these Maya tutorials in the comments. So I just uh, posted a community and you guys said that uh, you wanted more of a Maya tutorial. So I'm just working on more of a Maya tutorial. So let me know in the comments uh, what you think and like the video and stay tuned for the future tutorials.